What's up guys? Do you want to get better at Smash? Of course you mean you watch my videos, so Metify is probably the best place for you to get sessions right now and get a lot better. There are a ton of different amazing coaches and you'll even find me on there. It's also not just for Smash, it can also be for different games like Brawlhalla or Pokemon or even chess. Anyways, if you want to book a session and become legitimately better, then there's no better time than now since offline is coming back. And you can very easily get a session by either joining my Discord or going to the Metify webpage and you'll be able to see my schedule there and you can pick whatever time fits you. Don't forget to use the promo code for a 15% discount as well as you can refer a friend to take a session as well. And if they do, then both of you will get a $10 discount. Pokemon Trainer at the highest level has a lot of versatility, but will require a lot of practice and studying to understand which Pokemon to prioritize for each matchup and when to switch according to the percents or situation. Each Pokemon specializes in each of the three different playstyles in Smash. Squirtle plays a bait and punish game, Ivysaur plays a pressure heavy game, and Charizard plays a call out game. Of course, each Pokemon can also play the other playstyles, it's just that they don't thrive with the other playstyles as much, if at all. So not only should you attempt to master each Pokemon, but also each playstyle, as obviously some characters and players will suffer against specific playstyles, which can help you in prioritizing the correct Pokemon. Knowing the general counterplay for each Pokemon can be important as well. Squirtle will mostly be dashing around and tilting or shield dashing a lot to find a grab or a short hop aerial to deal a lot of damage. Having really good movement and jumps will be important against Squirtle so you don't have to deal with his tilts or short hop aerials so much. And at the same time, be ready to whiff punish the short hop aerials or punish it out of shield if possible. Pressuring Squirtle safely as much as possible without getting grabbed is the way to go. Ideally, you'll want to try forcing Squirtle to full hop as much as you can, as it's during a full hop where he is the slowest and most exposed with below average aerials to land downwards with. Meaning you can try to anti-air him or whiff punish him and even if Squirtle press an aerial, you'll most likely be trading. Even getting full hop anti-aired by Squirtle could potentially lead into a trade or small damage. At least it's not a grab or a tilt that leads into a grab. You could also try your best in attempting to force Squirtle into double jumping and disadvantage. Basically playing really well against mashed aerials and air dodges till he starts giving you the double jump. Since if you hit him up again or off stage without a jump, he might feel the need to swap which will benefit a ton of matchups. You can also attempt to grab Squirtle's Shield Dash if you ever want to try calling something out on the ground. Ivysaur will do a lot of Razor Leafs if you don't approach, so play very back and forth in your movement to always make the Ivysaur question when you are approaching, and eventually he'll lose patience and press a preemptive Razor Leaf that you could jump over. Just be careful as he'll also try to anti-air you a lot or get wild with dash grab at some points, both very risky and whiff punishable. You'll also want to try to be ready and punish out of shield a lot since Ivysaur's only safe play is Razor Leafs and Landed Aerials, which also could be parried and punished. Or you pressure Ivysaur until he jumps for a safe play and then you punish with an anti-air. Against Charizard you'll want to play patient. Wait for him to swing first or jump first, and then punish. You'll want to play pressure heavy against him just like you play against Squirtle, just that he's much easier to pressure and hit, as well as slower. A common strategy that you'll hear and can probably imagine is to start with Squirtle, combo him till around 60-70%, then switch to Ivysaur to deal more damage and try scoring the kill. And if the kill seems too hard to get, then you switch to Charizard to try surviving and abusing rage. But in reality, most of the time, this won't be the play in a ton of matchups as prioritizing just one or two Pokemon could be better. For example, against fast, close-ranged characters, it will usually benefit you to prioritize Squirtle's movement and frame data to be able to match their speed and pacing, as Ivysaur and Charizard can get overwhelmed and suffocated. Ivysaur would only really be used for edge guarding or for specific kill percent, while Charizard would strictly be used if they seem to have trouble killing to abuse rage as a last resort and hopefully punish them out of shield for early kills. Sticking with Squirtle however to find forward tilt tech chase kills and even sticking with him until really high percent sometimes can still be better as these faster characters can typically die early anyway. Floatier or slower characters it'll be a bit harder to generalize since all Pokemon do fairly well. 
so you can level it out a bit more evenly and put more emphasis on what the player seems to be struggling against in the moment. Just keep in mind that Ivysaur will usually come out ahead in these matchups as he will make it a lot harder for these characters to land. Projectiles owners can be a bit of a pain for all Pokemon, but Ivysaur will typically do worse in these matchups, so you'll be prioritizing Squirtle to get around projectiles and Charizard because of his dash speed and out of shield play. Some matchups are obviously not going to be that easy to generalize. Characters like Jigglypuff, Dedede, Luigi, Rosalina, Snake might be better to prioritize Ivysaur, since interacting with these characters at super close range can be really dangerous. While some characters like Meta Knight, Link, or any other character that might have very telegraphed recoveries, you might just want to stick with Squirtle and Charizard. Just keep in mind that Ivysaur can still be good against all matchups, as long as you want to play with platform pressure. Hopefully this gives you a general idea of which Pokemon to use for what reason, but it's all pretty subjective since it can also just come down to preference and comfort. Either way, you'll have to play a lot and figure out yourself how to strategize around each matchup and when to specifically swap, as explaining when you should generally swap is almost impossible and more of an intuition thing. Squirtle combos in particular is something that you should be labbing out in training mode more than anything as Squirtle can be the primary reason for why you might snowball on a ton of players. Besides, Ivysaur's and Charizard's combos are pretty straightforward and much easier to execute. And for those two Pokemon, it'll generally be more important to practice things like spacing and holding the advantage state, edge guarding, ledge trapping, and so on, which will be more matchup specific. Something you should know is that all Pokemon share the same staleness cue, so they all stale each other, but it's nothing that you really have to pay attention to. Swap provides intangibility at frame 1 to 25 and will leave you open for 14 frames before the Pokemon can act. So as much as you think this can be used as an air dodge, most of the time it'll most likely just punish you even harder. So using swap as a panic option is usually a bad play, and instead you could maybe use it as a very rare mix-up if anything. Besides, swapping from Squirtle to Ivysaur only makes your landing options and get off me options slower and from Ivysaur to Charizard even slower. However, switching from Charizard to Squirtle might benefit you due to faster and more options and disadvantage sometimes. When you swap, it'll normally take around 2 seconds before you can swap to the next Pokemon, so learning how to fast swap is super important. After you press any special move with a Pokemon, the timer is gone and you can immediately swap to the next. The fastest ways to do this is with Squirtle's Water Gun Charge into a quick jump cancel, Ivysaur Vine Whip or Razor Leaf, preferably off stage while cancelling it, and Charizard Fire on stage. But even better could be to run off and quickly reverse a B to the ledge. Otherwise, for Charizard, you might also just want to wait out the timer if things are too risky. Something that will help Squirtle off stage for a fast swap is to charge the Water Gun up to 90%. When the game starts, and then if you want a fast swap from Charizard to Ivysaur, then you'll just have to press B to finish the water gun and quickly swap. This will mostly be helpful if, for example, you're playing Squirtle to begin with, and then you kill with Ivysaur and you want to immediately get to Squirtle again, and so on. Some of the more basic swaps could be finishing a combo with Squirtle against a floaty character upwards and then swapping to Ivysaur for Juggles, or hitting a dash attack or even a combo upwards with Ivysaur and then swapping to Charizard to catch a landing for a grab or up smash if they are too fast for Ivysaur to catch up with. Other common combos is hitting a Squirtle back air close to the corner or down tilt at the ledge to launch them far off stage, use Water Gun and then swap to Ivysaur to attempt to down air against recoveries. Most importantly, we'll be swapping for edge guard combos, however. Something as simple as Squirtle going off stage for a down air into forward air and then swapping to Ivysaur to potentially snipe double jumps with Vine Whip or cover low recoveries with neutral air, or just quickly getting the ledge and even swapping to Charizard and really quickly try and hit an aerial off stage. Here is where you can get creative as there are endless off stage setups.
all the Pokemon's disadvantage isn't really that great as they have a hard time landing and getting off the ledge. One of the more important plays will be timing ledge options really well as well as being comfortable playing around with all the combined ledge mixups that they have. Keeping things reactionary to quickly punish things that can be punished will be equally as important as being unpredictable with your ledge options as generally their ledge options won't be that great. You could in theory swap for ledge options but it's very reactable and it's very risky. This is as far as I can go in terms of general depth for Pokemon Trainer as anything else would be very specific. And if you want to get even better then feel free to book a session and I'll help you perfect your play. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And if you want to support my work then please help me out on Patreon. And to all my Patreons, thank you so much for all the support. And feel free to come by my Twitch as I stream almost daily from 4pm EST.